Hello everybody and thank you to the Royal Society for giving me the opportunity to present today. I'm going to be talking about how mutations in the HCN1 gene cause developmental and epileptic encephalopathy. But first, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This is Ebony. Ebony is a four-and-a-half-year-old South Australian girl who unfortunately lives with a severe form of epilepsy known as developmental and epileptic encephalopathy, or DEE. DEE is characterised by seizures which typically begin in the first year or so of life and don't tend to respond to anti-epileptic medication, as well as developmental delays. In Ebony's case, her epilepsy is caused by a mutation in her HCN1 gene. HCN1 encodes the HCN1 channel, which is one of the four hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide-gated channels, or HCN channels. HCN channels are ion channels which are found on the membrane of cells in both the brain and the heart, and their structure can be seen in the image on the right-hand side of this slide. HCN channels pass a cation current, which in neurons is known as IH, and it's carried primarily by sodium although these channels can also pass potassium and a small amount of calcium. One of the key roles of HCN channels is that they stabilise the neuronal membrane potential. This role is summarised in the image on the left-hand side of this slide. So briefly, when a neuron becomes too negatively charged or hyperpolarised, HCN channels open, and when a neuron becomes too positively charged or depolarised, HCN channels close. This modulates the amount of sodium that flows into the cell, and therefore helps to return the cell back towards rest. A number of variants in HCN1 have been shown to cause epilepsy, including this one here, HCN1 M305L, which is Ebony's variant. However, before our study, very little was known about how these mutations caused epilepsy. In order to fill in this gap, we made the first mouse model of HCN1 epilepsy. This is the HCN1 M294L heterozygous knock-in mouse, which carries the mouse version of Ebony's epilepsy mutation and we use this mouse to study how HCN1 variants cause epilepsy. Our aims in this project were twofold. Firstly, we wanted to characterise the HCN1 M294 L knock-in mouse to see whether it recapitulates Ebony's phenotype. In other words, do we have a good model of HCN1 epilepsy? We then wanted to dive more deeply into how these mutations cause epilepsy using a range of electrophysiology techniques. I'll begin by taking you through AIM-1, and our first question within this AIM was, do these mice have epilepsy? In order to study this, we conducted electrocorticography recordings, or ECOG recordings, from these mice. This involves conducting a surgery to implant small metal electrodes on the surface of the mouse brain and recording brain activity. From these ECOG recordings, we were able to show that yes, these mice do indeed have epilepsy. We found evidence of spontaneous seizures on the ECOG traces from some of these mice. They looked a bit like this. We also found uh, evidence of epileptiform spikes on the ECOG traces from these mice. These spikes had a very characteristic morphology of a large amplitude event followed by a period of fast activity before normal ECOG activity resumed. The interesting thing about these spikes was that we found them in the ECOG traces from every single one of our M294L knock-in mice, and we never saw equivalent spikes in wild-type or control mice. These spikes also occurred fairly frequently, on average about one every two minutes or so. Because of this, they were far more frequent than the sporadic rare seizures that we sometimes saw on traces. And because of this frequency, we could use them as a quantifiable readout of epilepsy severity in these mice. We used these spikes to study the efficacy of anti-epileptic drugs. We selected two drugs to begin with, sodium valproate and lamotrigine. And we chose these two drugs because they're both drugs that Ebony herself has tried, but she had very different responses to them. Valproate is a drug that she's still taking because it helps her epilepsy, whereas Lamotrigine is a drug that she t was tried on, but rapidly taken off because it worsened her seizures. We found a similar pattern of effect in our mice, where sodium valproate significantly reduced ECOG spiking, and Lamotrigine significantly increased it, as well as triggering full-blown seizures in a subset of our mice. These results were particularly interesting as it suggests that these mice respond similarly to human HCN1 epilepsy patients with respect to anti-epileptic drugs, which means hopefully we can use these mice to screen drugs that might be useful in these patients going forward. We also wanted to see whether these mice recapitulate the learning and developmental difficulties that many HCN1 epilepsy patients face. In order to study this, we ran a Barnes maze test, which is a test of long-term spatial learning and memory. In this test, mice learn to locate a target box based on the location of visual cues around the room. We were able to show that our knock-in mice could indeed learn, as evidenced by the fact that they found the target faster on day seven than on day one of the trial. 
However, they learn significantly more slowly than their wild-type controlled counterparts, showing that they do indeed have a learning deficit. So to conclude, we were able to show that our HCN1 M294 knock-in mice do indeed recapitulate many of the major phenotypic components of HCN1 DEE. We next wanted to dive more deeply into the mechanism of how these mutations are causing HCN1 channel dysfunction and therefore epilepsy. To do so, we used two methods. The first was the Xenopus labus oocyte expression system. So in these experiments, we take frog eggs, Xenopus oocytes, and we get them to express HCN1 channels, either wild-type channels, mutant channels, or a combination of the two. And we then measure the passage of current across the membrane of these oocyte cells through the HCN1 channels. The advantage of the oocyte system is that oocytes are fairly simple and have very few natural or endogenous currents, which allows us to isolate just the effect of HCN1. However, obviously neurons are far more complicated. So in order to see the effect of these mutations in a neuronal context, I measured the activity of individual neurons from the brains of wild type versus HCN1 M294 L knocking mice. And it was these experiments that allowed us to allowed us to conclude what this variant was doing to the channel and how it was causing epilepsy. These two graphs on this slide are current voltage curves. So they plot the amount of current passed across the membrane of a cell on the y-axis against the membrane potential or membrane voltage of the cell on the x-axis. I'd like to take you first through the graph on the left, which comes from our oocyte recordings. Looking first at the trace in black, which indicates oocytes that express wild-type HCN1. These channels behaved exactly as you'd expect normal HCN1 to. At hyperpolarised membrane potentials, they opened and passed a lot of current. And at depolarised membrane potentials, they closed, indicated by the zero, and stopped passing current. The interesting thing is that we just don't see this with our oocytes expressing mutant HCN1. And I'd like to focus particularly on the area shaded in grey, which indicates membrane potentials around rest in most neurons. Within this region, you can see that oocytes expressing M305L HCN1 remain open and continue to pass some current under circumstances where wild-type channels are closed. We found a very similar pattern of activity when we looked at the um, current through HCN1 channels in neurons from wild-type versus knock-in mice. HCN1 channels from brain cells from wild-type mice closed at depolarised membrane potentials as expected, while HCN1 channels in neurons from M294L mice remained open and continued to pass current. So from these experiments, we were able to conclude what this variant does. The M305L variant causes HCN1 to remain permanently open, even under circumstances where normal HCN1 would close. And this leads to a continual leak or flow of sodium ions into the cell. The downstream effect of this is that neurons with this dysfunctional HCN1 fire action potentials more readily and this causes epilepsy. The leak of sodium into the cell causes these cells to sit at a depolarised resting membrane potential, which means that at rest they are closer to their threshold for firing. This then therefore means that they need less excitatory or depolarising current input to trigger action potential firing so they fire more action potentials and it is this hyperexcitability which causes the epilepsy. So to conclude, we were able to determine how the HCN1 M305L variant is causing epilepsy. This variant causes HCN1 to remain permanently open, which allows sodium to continually flow into the cells. This sodium influx causes cells at rest to sit closer to their threshold, which means they fire action potentials more readily. And it is this hyperexcitability which causes the epilepsy. Excitingly, when we went back to publish data in the literature, we found a similar pattern of effect in many other HCN1 epilepsy variants, suggesting that this cation or sodium leak might underlie many HCN1 epilepsies, not just those caused by the M305L variant. Where to from here? Well, to me, the answer is obvious. How do we use what we know to help patients like Ebony? I plan to use our new knowledge from the electrophysiology plus our new mouse model to figure out the best ways of treating HCN1 epilepsy. So we see more photos like this of patients like Ebony hitting their milestones, having adventures and living full and healthy lives. I'd like to thank everybody who was involved in this research, especially those who were on a paper that we managed to thankfully get published in the journal Brain earlier this year. I'd like to thank the Australian Government for funding my PhD, the Royal Society for giving me the chance to present today, and of course a huge thanks to Ebony's family for giving us permission to share their story.